uh, Laura McCain, committee member. Scott Donahue, committee member. Betsy Cooley, committee member. Tom Modick, committee member. Marcy Greenhut, Public Works Department. Sarah Billing, planning. Or Scott Popo, Works Director. Tim Bukowski, committee member. Sabrina Lambert, city manager. Mike Roberts, Public Works. Nora David, resident. Cynthia Armour, uh, East Bay Bicycle Coalition. Is there any public comment about items that are not on our agenda? Um, has anybody read the, the detailed minutes that are attached? Can we approve those without a quorum? Can we approve them without a quorum? Who knows? We'll find out. Probably not. Okay, so shall we skip ahead? And somebody said we could also do the economy update, because that's still some information. Yeah, we could do comments. Okay. But I'm sure Maurice would like to be shoved in towards the top of this list. Right? Well, just as we stop. Either way, however you'd like to proceed, I mean, I'm well, not sure there is an OPLVIA update. I haven't okay, so real yeah, briefly. There, I would say that there probably isn't. So my we'll, name is on there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that we haven't so really found done. much out about that. So actually, um, I did run into Sal recently, uh -huh. um, and he uh, encouraged. Um, anybody who is interested uh, to respond to his doodle uh, calendar thing because he says nothing is happening with Oblivia because people aren't responding so there's no coordinating committee. It's hard to, to get everyone together, yeah. Um, and so if, if anybody that wants to be involved will go to the doodle. Which you email to everybody, right? Right, yeah. Um, there's a link in an email from it's a, it, a Google Doodle, it's like an online survey. Yeah, I know what they are, but I don't remember. Well, okay, so about after the last meeting, we sent out um, an email to anybody that was here that said they wanted to be involved. And when I ran into him last week, he said he hadn't heard from anybody. So you didn't send it so out So when I sent it day. out again, I just sent it to you two guys because I was thinking you're, you're you, you seem to be sort of taking the lead on it last time, like you brought it up. I, you know, I didn't mean well, to lay any more. said they were interested, and so. And so, and since Tom is a chair, I was kind of hoping you guys would take the liberty of forwarding it to anybody um, that it, because it's not, it, it's a, a, a committee um, thing. It's not. But we um, don't. I'm not organizing it. We don't usually send emails to the whole committee, and I don't even know that I have everyone's. Email. I don't. Know okay. Everyone's email. At some point, we'd love to have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So but let me have you be careful about that. You know, like I don't think we can send emails around as a committee. You, well, you can't. Well, we can say that. You know, there's we're trying to get people for. So, a right. by the same token, then you probably can't show up at an Oklahoma meeting all together and discuss something that might be on an agenda here. I guess. No, I think that's. I don't know. Uh, okay. I think that Hopefully you can't have a majority of. You can't have um, a quorum of the members uh, present and discuss how things are going to be handled. So. Um, but we would be in a different capacity at that. Yeah. We wouldn't be there as well. So let, 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 me, let me just so let me bring it back to the committee. <clears throat> you can't have pre discussed the issue. Yeah. So, so the email that I sent out initially after the last BPAC meeting went to all the people here that were interested. And at that point, all you needed to do was go to the doodle thing and say when you're available. You don't have to actually talk amongst yourselves about yeah, anything. Yeah. So. But could you send if, it to the wider committee in case somebody who didn't say they were interested? In that? Seventy-four people. Oh no, no, just the the committee, the ten committee members. All just committee members. members. Yeah, not the. Although you know the seventy-four people, maybe some of those people want to be on the Okavia committee. And maybe we have a driving people. force. In yeah, there. yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, those are people who are interested yeah. in biking and walking and everything else. No reason they shouldn't be part. So, is there somebody from the the committee that wants to sort of? Somehow take responsibility for organizing that, or I mean, I have a list. I guess I, I I'm just trying to think of a way to do that. Um, let me let me think about that. I don't want to spend too much time on this, Good but um, <laughs> just give me the email addresses. Well, if you have a list for for that entire group, why don't you just attach it and send it to the entire yeah. list, or and people can either fill it out. It has, like I know how to use a list. Or well, no, she, no, she, no, no, she, 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 she has all of our addresses. She doesn't yeah. go through it. It's just a BCC. We just to make sure to. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, and that was probably what I, another thing that I might have, anyway. Um, okay. All right, so let's just say we covered Oakland VA. Yeah. Everybody knows that if you want to see something happen in Emeryville especially, we have to um, get people engaged in the discussion so we can plan. Um, can I make a comment for something that's not on the agenda? As that, that, I believe, is uh, at the end. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, I just want to say thank you, Michael. I don't know if you were responsible, but there is now a bike on Horton Street northbound where the bike lane is torn up because of some construction. There's a share the lane sign, which is really nice so that I feel more comfortable as a bike getting out of the bike lane because the bike lane is not great. And I just wanted to say that this is also a future agenda item. Hopefully before all the big construction starts at Sherwin-Williams, it's not super urgent, but um, I would love for us to talk about having maybe a policy as a city that we ask anytime someone's doing construction that impacts a bike lane, we say, okay, here's what you must do to mitigate that impact, like requiring signs. And I, I think Emeryville is not alone in um, having contractors not really respect bike lanes. I mean, Berkeley, right downtown, there's some construction going on in Milvia, and the contractors have been terrible about impinging <laughs> on the bike lane there. Um, it happens everywhere, but maybe we could be leaders in setting some good policy. Because I was told by, they were doing um, lane control when I was headed southbound on Horton last week, and I was told that I needed to get on the sidewalk. And I said no, I didn't push it. But, but, and it was a place where it really wasn't feasible for me to get on the sidewalk, even if it had been a good idea. And it, I think that just sort of showed how the construction worker just really didn't get it about bikes and some better signage might help. So just to clarify, you were on your bike when I told you. I'm sorry, I yes, I was on my bike and he was doing one-way traffic control and okay. he said I needed to get on the sidewalk so the cars could come the other way. And I, it was under the overpass, like the sidewalk is very broken up there. There wouldn't, it wasn't feasible at all for me to do what he was asking me to do. And he has no authority to tell you to get on no, the sidewalk and bicycle. No, he doesn't. And I was through he's there. He's no like, authority, but he's doing traffic control. So right. It's a matter. <laughs> well, and I was through there, and he didn't. He was very non-assertive about it. He wasn't like trying to push me out of the street. And I was through there in ten seconds, and then like you know, it wasn't a big deal, but it just. If I could comment on that, we you know, whenever we approve an approach permit, we always require them to do traffic control to standards. And standards means complying and, and meeting the requirements for the bike lane. So that's why, we, that's why the sign's up there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of pushing to get that sign put up because it's not a sign they might normally have. It's a new standard. It's a new standard. So, oh, not everyone's familiar great. with it. Or a new yeah, so maybe we as a city, maybe staff can just help right. them because it is something that is pretty commonly right. forgotten mm -hmm. in construction zone. And since we're going to have constru a big construction, I think, going on on some bike ways soon. All right. Oh, yeah. So um, we don't, we still don't have our uh, forum, right? Well, I For guess we can. Item, so we can listen to the presentation. Well, that's a bummer. And make comments. Well, someone will show up before uh, we have to make it. Well, if, what do you need, Maurice? Do you need like a, a vote or a direction from us, or are you looking at this for point, comments? At this point, I'm going to present what we have for the CIP, and then we'd just like to hear feedback. Okay, so we can do that. Yeah, we can put this on the next month's meeting, if, and if maybe you feel it has to be something you vote on, then we can do that too. But, uh, but I, what's the deadline? Form, could, well, we're going to be having uh, presenting these the CIP to all the committees over this next month. This month, actually. And so in, in March, we're going to have a special city council meeting. Talk about uh, to talk about CIP, and then ultimately it'll be approved by the city council, hopefully in April. So basically, if we don't have a quorum to <coughs> vote on something, and we feel like we want to vote, would you be able to come back next month? To, I mean, mm -hmm. I hate to make you um, this Friday, we, so. or is it too late? We, we, there would be time to do it. We, yeah, we're not going to bring it to the planning commission until the end of March. So, so it, yeah, so it'll be. Time. We can put it on the next month's so agenda as well. Okay. First meeting in March should work. Okay, thank you. And, and I'm sorry, we, it's really rare. I know. But we already knew ahead of time that both Swanta and Jennifer couldn't make it, um, and occasionally others don't, but usually yeah. there's no problem with the corner. I mean, yeah. at least with I've been doing it. Yeah, no, I, I haven't seen that happen in my whole time in the last huh. years. Okay, so. Let's make those put the CIP on Yeah, why don't we do that? We'll take action item B and take care of that now because action item A, maybe we'll have a little. Resolution later on if somebody else shows yeah, up. Yeah, because that we really do need to vote on. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please okay. proceed, sir. So, uh, CIP, we passed out a, a pamphlet or packet to you. Uh, it is kind of last minute, and thanks for uh, bearing with us. We've had a lot of work trying to put that packet together. 
Uh, there's a lot to absorb there, especially if you've seen it for the first time right now. So we made a little cut sheet here to kind of hi highlight what is in the package. So we can go through these bullets. And what I thought we could do is that we can go through these bullets, these highlights, and then um, we probably want to just kind of dig into the, the big sheet that shows all the projects we're doing. And then if you have questions on the projects, there's a, in the packet, there's project descriptions for each of the projects that we're going to be doing. But essentially, this is a five-year CIP. We haven't done one since 2005, 2006. And the reason why we hadn't really updated it is because of the loss of redevelopment. Uh, we didn't have much money we had. So it's been in limbo uh, for quite a while. We're finally at a point where we understand the funding, the financing that we have here in the city. So we've been move, uh, pushing this forward. It, it would be a five-year plan through fiscal year 2019. And so essentially what we've done is we've categorized all our projects into either mandated, restricted funds, or preventive maintenance, or discretionary funds. So we've, we've kind of broken it down into different categories. So if you look at this, this big project sheet here, uh, this kind of summarizes all the projects we're going to be doing, or we're looking at. And there's about $95 million of projects that we're recommending to have funding. Um, so they're broken down into the various categories like I just mentioned. Um, and then uh, we have so who did the breakdown of the study? So staff has been working on this, and at the recommendation of policy set by the city council. So they wanted us to set up projects that well, what we looked at was, uh, you know, if you look at this third bullet, we looked at whether a continuation of existing project that we have undergoing or for projects that leverage outside funding. Or we did projects that respond to emergency situations or crucial needs, or does the project preserve current facilities, like fixing it first? Those are the things we looked at. And then uh, we came up with these $95 million worth of projects to do. And they're essentially projects that are community facilities, facilities maintenance, housing, uh, IT, we've got marina projects, we've got bike ped projects as a category, public art, the sewer projects, streetscape, transportation projects. So there's a whole array of projects here. And then if you look at the sheet, you can see the way they're listed here under community facilities. The first ones we show are all the ones with restricted funds. So those are funds that could only be spent on that project when it says restricted. And then we had uh, projects in, under community facilities for preventive maintenance. Those would be sort of the projects where we're trying to up, upgrade what we have or fix what we have. And then um, the projects that are shown as discretionary, well, those are projects that you could do or not do. It would be up to the city council. I mean, if we're following the, prop, the policy of fix it first, then those are preventive maintenance. And if you do, if you, if you find the restricted ones and then the preventive maintenance projects, then you have money left over. You spend that on your discretion, discretionary projects. And so we went through that for each of these categories. Um, and so if you look, and this fourth bullet, we've kind of broken down. So we've got about $69 million worth of community facility projects. We're, we're suggesting to spend $625,000 on facility projects over the next five years. We've got about $1.6 million in housing, IT projects, $1.1 million, the marina projects of $1.2 million. Now, by head, we're showing in this category here $5.6 million. And projects, but you should note that that does not that 5.6 does not include the South Bayfront Bridge or two traffic signals, which are shown in a different category. So if you look at those in addition, which are uh, pedestrian and bike related, there's about 22.3 million in bike head projects that we're proposing of the 95 million. So it's actually about 23 percent. You said just two bridges. What was it? I got the the bridge. The, the South Bayfront Bridge doesn't include the, the 5.6 million in this yeah. in the table. Yeah, I'm just with specific. Oh, South Bayfront. I'm it, sorry. It, it doesn't yeah. include the South Bayfront Bridge. What is the South Bayfront? Is that it's the bridge of Novartis to the Bay Street? Yeah, the one over there. Okay, yeah, I recognize that's, like, that's it. a big project. And then we also have two traffic signals. Like there's a traffic signal that we're proposing at the intersection of Doyle and uh, Powell. And if we build that, then you can extend your bike boulevard down Doyle Street. So that's really a bike-related project, but it's listed under transportation. So if you consider all the projects that are really bike related. We're, we're proposing about 22.3 million uh, in that category, which is about 23% of the overall projects. So we have about 1.3 million in public art, 
two and a half million in sewer streetscape system. Those are projects that would like beautify the streets, like street trees or improving our street light system and those kind of projects. 2.9 million there. About three and a half million in just general transportation projects. And then our city fleet of operating vehicles, 1.7 million. So of the 90, there's, so there's 95 roughly million in projects that we, we have total appropriations that we could fund. And then there's about 9.8 million in other high priority projects that are kind of remaining unfunded. And so, of course, there's a lot of other projects that we didn't list here, like uh, projects like the Ashby Interchange, which are really big projects. And there's a lot of other projects in the bike plan, in the parks master plan. We couldn't look at all those projects and create descriptions for them right now. Those are projects that we would do at some point, but they're not what we're talking about doing in the next five years. So we still have those on the back burner. Um, what, we're kind of, what we want to recommend to City Council is that we have a reserve balance in our CIP of at least a million dollars for unanticipated general capital or major maintenance needs. So that's the policy we're going to look for from the City Council. And I want to point out that these estimates that we have, the projections, we, you know, they're not exact design bids or anything, so we're kind of projecting how much we need here. And so we're going to be refining those numbers as we go along. And so what we're, what we're going to be doing is to, to have advisory bodies look at these lists, get feedback from them, and go through a process to get ultimately uh, the Planning Commission to approve the CIP and then the City Council. And we're going to have a, a meeting in March to get more input from the full City Council. So um, what I'd like to do is maybe take a look with you at the, the big spreadsheet that shows all the projects we're doing. And then um, we can zero in on any of these as you want, but if you, I would imagine you're probably very interested in the bike peg ones, since there's a bike peg one. And so the projects we have here that we're, we're listing as bike peg projects, um, the big one at the top are the sidewalk. There's a sidewalk improvement program. We've got about $1.7 million of the sidewalk work that we need to do here citywide. Um, we, as you know, got a grant to do the Christie Avenue Bay Trail. Um, the Bay Trail on Christie right in front of the, the Big Bear restaurant there. That's a, uh, we were lucky to get a grant there for 490000 Well, actually, I should say, I don't know what this is listening to before. Oh. This, this is, we actually got a $550,000 grant. I don't know why this is down to 4 That's an error. So that should be five fifty. Um, and we're, we're going to find errors as we go along in this thing because we've been rushing through this out. What line item is that? That's project number 41. Okay. So, so that's the Bay Trail across on the little square, so instead of having to go through the, the parking lot of the hotel, right. actually. Right. So, so then we have the Emeryville Greenway from Stanford to Powell. That's another million dollars. What is, what is that? Really quickly, do you want to make sure they know that there's detailed uh, project sheets? For oh, yeah. Right. 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 And that's what I wanted to say, though. Um, so we have, if you want to have thorough descriptions of each of these projects, they're in your packet. And if you just go to the, the number that's on the table here, you can go to the right page number and you it can get it. It says new next to the top number, so I know. Right, so if you go down to the, the lower right-hand corner, I think oh. we have numbers there. Oh, okay. So we hand-wrote them in there. Got it. Okay. okay. 41 is not in here. Yeah, it is. on the back. Oh, it's on the back. Oh, it's on the back. Oh, it's on the back. Oh, I'm sorry. If you want a thorough description, you can, you can read them. Yeah. There are in your back. So, Okay, so we have the Emberville Greenway. It's that park segment on the Greenway that's right at the intersection of Powell and Hollis and it runs diagonally through to Stanford and west to uh, Port, an additional block. And that was uh, a grant from the right? That was a grant funded project, yes. Uh, however, even though it's a grant funded project, we need to use some general capital funds to offset some of the cost increases we've had on that. So we're suggesting that this is general fund monies into that to the tune of three Did you say where that grant money comes from? I'm just curious. That grant came from, <coughs> I think it says it here. Do you remember they came to us when they were writing that there was a, yeah. a state or something? It was right? a state grant. Yeah. For doing that some particular For the green ones, yeah. Amber, Amber's uh, applied for that. Uh, 
It might say the actual grant name on the Some of them have um, notes here on the left side. Like the VRF grant for the Bay Trail. What was that? What was the VRF stand for? The vehicle Replacement Fund. So, oh, okay. so no, Vehicle Registration Fund. Oh. It was actually partially Vehicle Registration Fund and partially Measure B. So this, that's what, this, this is showing incorrectly. I'll we'll update that. Um, so, so the Emeryville Green Lake, and then below that number 43 is the Horton Street Experimental Traffic Calming Measures. You might want to refer to that project description on page 43. And I would like to point out that this is the project where we were talking about getting a, a consultant to design improvements uh, to do temporary measures on, on, on Wharton Street to experiment with what we want to do for traffic calming there. Uh, I should point out that uh, we applied for a grant with MTC at the time, uh, and, and we actually got, I got oh. word last week that we, they're going to fund us the amount of $36,800 to, to prepare plans that we can implement uh, traffic calming measures there. And at some point, we need to meet with the committee to define what that scope of work is going to be for the consultant. But um, ACTC will be hiring a consultant. And we won't even have to do the RFP or any of that. Pro they're it's all, gonna, yeah. they're going to take care of what all that. What does AC say that acronym again? At Alameda County Transportation Authority. AC Commission. Commission. Al Commission, yeah. Are they going to meet with us, or are they going to sort of come in and take it over without a lot of input? No, they, we we will, all we need to do is decide what the scope of work is, tell ACTC, and they will co they will coordinate the contract with the consultant, and then the consultant works directly with us. So would the consultant oh, be able to uh, If we want that as part of their scope, we yeah. most likely the one uh, will come and present something. Uh -huh. yeah. So. I think there would be some. Yeah, I'd imagine that would be a part of the scope. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. That's awesome. Right. So then we have, um, so what I envisioned on that project is what I'd like to do is move that project probably in the first year so that we can get the experimental measures in so before Sherman Williams comes on board. Mm -hmm. And ideally, if we like those temporary measures, we can have them do them in, in the permanent. Make, make them pay for the, the permanent. Right. Okay, so then we have Safe Routes to Schools project on San Pablo, where so we're going to improve the area on San Pablo crossing between 43rd and 47th. Okay, what number are you talking about? Now? This is number 44. That's a grant that we received a, a couple, about a year or so ago. But that project is actually, uh, we're trying to get the actual design approved by Caltrans right now. It's been a real struggle. Mm -hmm. Every time we, uh, we send it in for a review, it's a new person looking at it. Been difficult, but we, that's in the works. Um, and the safe routes to transit, th those were the inf intersection improvements near Adeline and San Pablo. Mm -hmm. Then we've got project number 46, which we call the Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan Implementation. And there's like $175,000 in there. And those would be for some smaller size projects, like maybe putting up bike boulevard signs or some striking changes that this co this committee might recommend at some point to the city council that if we needed a place to fund it, we would have a pocket of money there that we could say, let's use this money for doing those smaller projects. Can I ask a Most question about that? Most Measure B, right? Yeah, we be funded through Measure B. Okay. So is that 125000 from Measure B what, what we're expecting to get over the next five years, 25000 a year? 25000 a year. Is that based on history that's about right? Yeah, so we get about 25000 a year. However, as you know, Measure B might be reauthorized. So if that and is it, reauthorized, it might double. It might double. But if you, all, if you go to the project description, You'll see that in the first two years of this CIP, we're suggesting that it'd be uh, 25000 each year from the general fund to help that. So the first year we have 50000 the second year we would have 50000 uh -huh. So there would be and additional so the, money beyond the Measure B money that we're suggesting. So the assumption is that in the fiscal years, the last three fiscal years, we'd have 50000 a year, but hopefully from Measure B. Yes, but we'd the other, still, we, we'd be able to continue. Yes, and I the guess. other thing is that in the third year, fifth, fifth, fifth school year, 16, 17, that would be the year that we're redoing the CIP once again. And at that time, you could revisit it. If you needed more money, you could also look at it. When, when is it going to be redone? 
We, we won't do this once every five years. We, we'll update these every two years. Oh, okay. So, okay. because I was going to, but my comment is that I think that's a very tiny amount of money. I mean, that's five years is half of the top time of our, well, really we're a couple of years into our bike plan. So, this is a huge chunk of this latest plan, and I can't see us implementing the plan for that amount of money. And I know there's other things that are sort of related to the plan. As, <coughs> we, yeah, well, we, as I said earlier, we've got, we're spending 23% yeah. of the overall CIP on bike projects. This is relating to the smaller projects that we might get a little direction to, to change a little striping here, or put in a sign there, put or maybe we decide we want a little extra something here and there from the bike plan. Okay, so this that, is just that's for That's above and beyond that's what's listed here. And it would come back to the, this committee and the city council to appropriate for the different projects as we go. Can and we'd have a place to fund it. I have one more question, which is, and you sort of just addressed this, I was surprised not to see the signage that we, we went through a whole process and that would come out of here. Okay, so we wouldn't have to go through that again. That that money, if this is approved, we could decide that if we want to do that now, we could use this money for that work. Because we were told this is we had approved an amount of money. I don't remember what it was, and we were told it's just going to be part of the CIP. But I don't and see it, falls, it, would fall under, it would fall under this part. Okay, so so therefore, if city council approves that line item, then the signage that we already approved is ready. Basically it's ready. ready to go, and then we would Just report back to City that. Council that we're going to use the money on that project. So, so, so it's, okay. I, I have a uh, more generic question. Property owners are required to maintain sidewalks. Right. So that doesn't come out of the general fund or city project. Each property owner is required. <coughs> so all of these projects that involve sidewalk upgrades or a lot of these upgrades won't actually be coming from the general fund, will be coming from property owners. Right, correct? so we have about, last we looked, there's like 12 to 15 million dollars in sidewalks we need citywide. This would just cover those areas in the residential areas. And then what I envision also is some of this money would go out in front of, we'd spend it on sock cutting trip hazards in front of commercial property owners. And while we're out there, we'll notice that there's larger pieces that need to be replaced. And then we we're going to compile an inventory of areas that need work in front of commercial property owners. And then it's more like a code enforcement big project to start sending letters to all these property owners and working with them to try to get them to do their sidewalks. So you're right. We, a lot of the work that we need to do on sidewalks in front of commercial property owners' uh, properties would, need, would be covered by them. But it is only commercial, not residential property. Residential property owners, uh, under our zoning or our, our ordinance, are uh, the city is responsible for all residential side. So the sidewalks on the triangle, for example, those are generally or my next door neighbor's house. or your neighbor's house or your house, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what's the next project? Um, CCL. Okay, so um, so we heard from the community that they're, they're interested in that bike path that would be a part of the ECCL project. And as you all heard, uh, the project, the ECCL project, doesn't have enough money to fund it. So we, you know, we actually created a project sheet in here. Um, Seven hundred twenty-five thousand is the number we heard from the school district at that time. And so. It, we're showing this as unfunded right now. Um, it's a discretionary project. If if we were to fund that project, the 725, then something else has to come off the list somewhere else. And 725 just seems pretty expensive for that project. But I, does that include moving? Oh, well, there's going to be boxes. grading. There's all sorts. There's of a stuff lot of work. There. There's retaining walls. There's um, but but is that kind of funding? Really, a school I mean, district the requirement yeah. that the city would be taking. You know, in other words, how do you parse that out? In what way? Say that again. Well, like they, that property uh, has issues that the current design, in theory, should take care of, and it looks like to me that their budget isn't handling something when I see a figure like 725,000, I don't know, that's, it just looks like they're shunting some of what should legitimately be their work onto the, the general city. So I can, yeah, I mean that, I can talk to that a little bit. So right now, yeah. that, so that, um, 
project or the path is included in the project, it, you know, the, the des current design can accommodate the path yes. at some point. Yes. And it was approved by the Planning Commission and the City Council with it um, uh, being in conformance with the general plan because it can be put in in a phase two. The district has it in as a phase two project funded from their bond funds. So this would just be saying we don't want to wait for that for them to be able to okay. issue those bonds in phase two. Right. It would be the city putting it in now. Okay. So, yeah. Thank yeah. you for that clarification. Yeah, that's right. If I remember, there was a whole bunch of consternation about whether it was going to be done right on, mm -hmm. right away. Or right. Instead of, or so this would kind of rush it to be a part of phase one of the work. But there's, but the money isn't there. The money's not. If if the, the city has to come from somewhere. Yeah, the money has to come. From Okay. okay, so all right. So the next project we have here is the frontage road day trail upgrade. This is a project that uh, we've had on hold for a while. We haven't had enough staff to really attend to it, to be honest. Um, but it would be to uh, extend uh, the ba the treatment on the Bay Trail in front of what we call the Siebel Building. As you remember, in front of the gas station, the shell station, and then in front of the hotel, we've put in landscaping along the Bay Trail on frontage road to give it a more, more of a separation from the street. And so we would extend that same treatment further north up until you get to the entrance road to the Chevys. And that's what this project would do. So with that, <clears throat> just a question, because I haven't heard about this. Well, maybe we've talked about it. Um, would that also give some kind of treatment across that road so that cars with no bikes would be crossing there? Across the entryway there? Yeah. We would, we would probably uh, upgrade the traffic signal so it's more easy to press the, the button. You, I mean, when I ride up to it, you've got to get really, it's really convenient to try to push the button to get your face. And then we could look at treatments crossing the road. I mean, like put the bricks that are on the sidewalk across the cross. It doesn't walks. include changing shoreline, shoreward park in the bricks there. Well, I'm just saying that, that I, and I don't know if this budget includes this, but I, some kind of either paint or some kind of change roadway to alert Change cars. the crosswalk so it's more of a... So it's green or could be, has it could, bricks so it could, continues this budget to be... Could be yeah. yeah. I've just been hearing a lot of talk about that as a way to do traffic coming and alert cars that it's mixed use right, right. there. We could look at those types of treatments. Yeah. Um, and then... Project 49, which is also not shown as being funded with this uh, phase, would be transit stop improvements. If you look at the bike plan, there was about $750,000 worth of transit stop improvements listed in the bike plan. And so this was an attempt to do 10% of the $75,000. And we would, uh, if you look at the project description, you know, there are certain things that we would be adding to all these transit stops. It could be a bus shelter. Uh, benches, lighting. Uh, so we would, you know, if, if this project were to be funded, then we would have to pick, pick out which which transit stops we want to upgrade and then send it there. And I just want to note, I mean, that, For next year. that makes me sad because it's only 10% and we're talking about it. You know, we'll be almost done with our bike plan by the time it seems like we won't be implementing that part. And we'll Emeryville, have a new bike plan by now. Right, practically, and Emeryville has such a nice track record of really paying, you know, really, I know we have a very ambitious bike plan this time, but we have a good track record in the past of really doing the projects in the bike plan. So what I want to say is that I, I just wanted to keep in mind that that EBOT study is going on, and I don't know if there's funding that is coming after the study, um, that, that transit, East Bay, whatever, whatever, transit study. Mm -hmm. um, that hopefully maybe some of those funds could be used to upgrade our transit stops. I don't know if that would be a potential use of that, if there is funding. But I, I just want to keep that in mind if there's a way we can coordinate the EBOTs with the directive of the light plan, that would be awesome. Or whatever other funding comes our way for transit, hopefully we'll be getting that from somewhere else. And then the last one on this list, under the bike head section, is the video detection and traffic signals. So we, we want to try to improve on our detection at all our traffic signals. So um, uh, the best way to do that would be to upgrade many of the signals to uh, video detection. And that would cost us roughly $490,000 to do all those signals that we need to do. 
And then, of course, in addition to these bike head projects, we've got in the transportation section, we've got two traffic signals that will really help bike pads or pedestrians anyway. Bike pads on item 74, the traffic signal at Powell and Doyle. And then 73, uh, the signal at 40th and Harlem, where it's pretty difficult to cross 40th Street at that location. Can I make a comment about 50 and well, I was just wondering, you know, the, the mysteries of the uh, Metropolitan Transportation Commission and they're giving funding to various projects. Is there some logic that could be studied about why they wouldn't fund video detection, <coughs> but they will fund other things? Well, we could use our Measure B funds to fund video detection. I mean, if, so <coughs> what we're talking about here is using our own city funds to speed that up. So if there were a grant to do signal modifications, we would surely apply for them. But uh, if we wanted to, and we have in the past used our bed, bike ped money from Measure B to pay for video detection. And if that's what you'd want to use your bike plan and implementation money on video detection, we could do that. Can I just say, I don't, I don't remember now, because I just, I probably need to go back and read the bike ped plan. Um, what we finally put in there about signals but I know we had a discussion about the fact that signals where pedestrians have to push buttons are not very pet friendly. And the discussing, at least in some intersections, putting in signals that automatically change on a cycle. Um, so I don't, I just wanted to put that into the discussion that video detection is not necessarily a panacea. And in my experience as a bicyclist, it just really doesn't work a whole lot better than the inverter loops. I never know where I'm, and video detection alone is useless without painting on the video. Well, that, that's standing. part of the issue is that we, we put up video cameras, and actually we have a zone for the pedestrian, or for the bicycles. But the bicyclists don't. But the, we don't have the stencils everywhere yet, yeah. so that takes staff effort to go out there and coordinate it with our signal maintenance tech, mm -hmm. so that we can, the signal tech knows where we want the bicyclist to stand, we paint the stencil, right. and then they can adjust it. That's all part of the project. We're going to need to spend staff time okay. to do that. Okay, because I think that it's sort of a waste of money as far as a bicycle is concerned if you put up the video camera, but you don't tell me where to stand. Because exactly. I'm thin. Exactly. I, I, I can totally very agree easily be in the wrong place. Right. Um, and I, I just would like us to get, even if it means we have fewer signals, I, you know, if we can't do as many signals budget-wise, I'd like us to see us do the ones we do right. You know, like so that they're really effective rather than do a bunch mm -hmm. and then they don't really help bikes because it's a frustrating experience I'm sure you know. Um, but I'd also like to see us make it easier for pedestrians to cross and I, I think pushing a button is not always the easiest thing and I've, I've been watching pedestrians the last few days and just as I ride around and noticing nobody pushes the buttons they wait for the cars to turn the light and then they just walk I mean people do not I'm a little no, but the, the largest the cities around here do they go through cycles right. you don't have to push it so people don't always yeah know. so I mean my but we have so much regional traffic if we put all our signals on recall you'd have so much more gridlock than you have right now I, as a city engineer I would recommend it I mean I ride my bike all over but I would not I would not, as a pedestrian, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I think you need to train people to learn how to push the button. So, I mean, you, you, you want to balance, and if you want congestion <coughs> and pollution and time wasted, then you, you go the route per se. As a city engineer, I would support it. I, I, I get that, and certainly on the lower traffic streets, I, I, you know, I totally see the point of it. Why have a, a cycle where you're stopping traffic when no one's coming the other way? Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, cars don't have a push a button. All they have to do is be cars. <laughs> and bicycles have to like do a little wiggle in front of the light. And pedestrians have to figure out, you know. And sometimes the buttons, especially so if someone's like frame down. <laughs> yeah, right. they, and sometimes the buttons off. are yeah. not convenient. They're not really that close to where you would be standing to cross. Yeah, I, I just think so. the approach you're saying is pretty radical, and I, I don't. Well, I'm not talking about the whole city. I'm yeah. saying there maybe there's a few signals that could be like that, and some of them may be signals we don't control, like 40th and uh, 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 San Pablo, but. Um, I think there might be a few places where there's enough traffic to merit that, and that might make life better for pedestrians. I, yeah. I, I just I have a comment about uh, uh, funding for these capital improvements. One of the things that we don't have in front of us that might be helpful if our our safety standards and accident reports. 
for, kind of for pedestrian safety. Mm -hmm. what, where are we out of compliance? I mean, that's, that's an issue. And then where have accidents occurred when we're in compliance or when we're out of compliance? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seems like for, for this kind of, some of this funding, we, we've got to have some of that in front of us. So a lot of these projects that we have here for the bike head uh, listing came from the bike plan. So we, we didn't just make these up. They're in a plan somewhere. Okay. Um, and then when we do traffic signals, we can't just put them in without doing signal warrants. And, and at that point, I mean, we've, we've looked at them in the past. you got to make sure that it complies with signal warrants where you look at the accident statistics and any the, volume, the number of pedestrians that cross. And there's a whole array of items that you look at. And if it meets the warrants, then you can legally put in that traffic signal. So, so, so we will be doing that. that. This this what you're telling me is this includes a lot of that every time there's signalization in funding. You, you have that as a part of it. You have to do. You have to make sure the okay. signal is warranted. One of the things I've noticed on um, uh, Park Street and Hollis is when I drive down Hollis, I always have to stop. Um, there's I always get a traffic light, and when I'm coming up Park, I always get traffic lights. And the way they work in San Francisco and Oakland, as I'm sure you know is that when the cars stop, then people automatically get a walk signal. And so the, their traffic is going this direction, and they, they get a, so it alternates. It's whatever, you so, know. So when it works on Hollis in general, <coughs> at nighttime it's running free. And if you come from the side street, it, it'll typically be red on the park, on park Avenue. It's, it's rest on green on Hollis all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the main court. Oh, I didn't know. But if you but approach it, it on it Park Avenue, it'll go through a few seconds before it, Go yellow and then green, and then you'll get your green light at night. But if you if you're approaching it during peak hour, you're you're under a coordination program, and it's going to take you 120 seconds or whatever the cycle length is to to change, depending right, on where you, you are. You're picking off walk signals at the time at the same time, so the cars are going this way. You get the automatic walk signal over here, and it, because otherwise you have to you have to hit the button, you have to wait a while, and then it, evidently what happens with me, I, I'll I'll admit. I get tired of waiting for it, and so I look and I see there isn't any traffic anyway because I've got a red light. So why don't I just cross? So I cross, and then then eventually then they have to stop because I had pressed the the walk light. So you're talking about when you cross the press from Rudy's to here? Yeah, and this is really very where I notice it most often mm -hmm. because I uh, because I do see that they get red lights, but I'm not getting a walk light. And well, um, so, so, so when it turns green, green coming up Park Avenue, but it's you don't get a walk signal unless you press the button. So because otherwise you're going to have a lot more time there dedicated. If there's no pedestrian there, you're going to have a lot of time where you're, you're stopping traffic on Hollow Street when you don't need it. Because it, okay. it takes a lot longer, it gives a lot longer green time to Park Avenue, mm -hmm. crossing the park, or crossing Hollis, if there's a pedestrian there. Because you've got three and a half feet per second that you set it to. So you don't, we've already increased the amount of green time for all the streets to allow for the cyclists to come through, so we've already extended that green and, time. And for the increased And we walking. increased the time for the pedestrians, so right. we've actually increased, so if you go to a thing where it's automatically going to come up for the pedestrian, you're really going to delay. And make it a 20 or 30 seconds. So, yeah, you're going to go a lot longer. Marcy very kindly pulled up the page, and it doesn't say the radical thing that I said about having lights that just have an automatic cycle, but the recommendation in the bike plan for, for pedestrians at intersections was to upgrade this, and, and I don't know if this is just talking about video detection and not talking about any pedestrian. That's what this network. project is for, just to put in video detection so they have better detection. Well, I think what's, maybe what's missing, and I don't know if it can be included, you know, I don't know, how, but is having countdown signals. Yes, um, that's what we typically do. And, and also adjust the signal timing, which has already been done. And also reducing pedestrian wait time because I think what Betsy is describing happen. I see that happen all the time too. Even if people do push the button, they wait so long and there's no cars coming. It's like why am I stand? Why am I held up when there's no traffic going the ah, they're going the other way? Um, and it like again, it depends on the time of day. If it's a, if it's in the a.m. a.m. midday or p.m. peak, you're not going to get as responsive time when you press the button. But well, what, so here's, can I tell you another thing that happens though, is if I'm a walker or even a bicyclist and I come up to an intersection just as a car has made it green, I don't have enough time to get across and if I push the button, I can't get a green. 64th and, we talk, and Hollis. Yeah. Which we one? Talk. 64th and Hollis coming 64th this way. 64th and Hollis. Okay. Boom. 
turned red on instantly. I'm still in the middle of the intersection of so, the bike. So we, we oh, were, really? Yeah. It's still happening. We going, were talking. Going in east west? We really still? used to do that in Parkdale. Well, we'll have to. Yeah. And we were talking about making change. I don't know if we can change lights so that if it's about to turn green for a car and a veteran pushes it, that they can get in on that green and it becomes I a I don't think the software works that way, but we can look at it. Um, and, and the other thing I just want to say, this is very specific, but um, Beaudry and Powell, I don't know why I just discovered this, but if the traffic flows on Powell and you have to trigger it on Beaudry, which is fine, but if you trigger it going one way, it's only green in one direction. It's red for the other direction. So if someone's driving up in the other direction, that would be cross traffic. They don't have to. They don't. They don't. Are you sure about that? Yeah. I just noticed this. And well, I was, I, that. I've, I've been never... going through there for a long time, and I was just like, whoa, why, why are they going and I have a red light? And then I realized the same thing was true the other way. And I don't know what that seemed very unusual. Well, let me take a look at that. I'm, I didn't know if it worked that way. No, if they put one in at uh, Doyle and uh, Powell, mm -hmm. are they planning on taking the Beaudry one out? Or well, we need to look at that, you know, whether or not we need both. Well, I mean, but I would think it's quite clear, clear that to take them out is more of an issue. go awful fast on that street. As I soon as they come across that bridge, they're going, you know, they think they're in Auburn where there is no speed. Would, my, my recommendation would be to leave it unless you see it's a problem. It's only triggered if somebody's there, so it's not like it's... Right. Okay, now this, 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 this whole kind of staff adjustment, where's the line item for that? Is that a single line item? I mean, for keeping the system tweaked and addressing problems, is that sort well, of... Well, no, I mean, we're, we're putting a single. Um, I mean, we have a, op, we, we have a budget, we budget like 90,000 a year for maintaining signals, 100,000 maintaining signals. Okay. So we're looking at it all the time. It's a separate. Uh, right. So, but if we see later that, hey, we put in a traffic at Doyle and we're having problems with the one at Beaudry, we're, next time we amend the CIP, that's going to be a project in the CIP, right? And we're going to look at it. And we're going to ask for funding for that later. So I'm, 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 I'm not recommending right now that we put in funding to take out a signal at Doyle. I mean, at Beaudry, the existing one. Okay. So on, on this video detection stuff, I looked at, so, the city only owns or controls 26 of the traffic signals, and they have 17 that have them. So there's only nine of them that have video detection right now, anyhow, right? Roughly, yeah. I mean, we have interspersed throughout. Yeah. And so when I'm looking at, you know, there's unfunded projects up here and total appropriate. So you're assuming that this will be funded over five years, the 490,000? Is that? Well, the way that, and I should say, I'm showing it in the first year, and we can figure out later on we're going to have to go through, uh, you know, sort of what, what, what year we do these projects. But uh, sure. uh, I would so say you're, you're, it more, you're I would expecting say that it is going to be. A, uh, yeah, I mean, if we if we if this gets funded, we would bid out a project to do them all and get a good rate on it, as mm -hmm. opposed to doing a piece. Gotcha. Okay. And doing, and so just so I understand what you said before, when you do the video detection. You're changing the signal, so that's when you can put in the countdown line as well for the crosswalk. I think most of them have countdowns. The ones that don't, if you, I mean, if we want to add a project to put countdowns where we don't, that's some more money we can put where in. Where are there countdowns in everything? We have countdowns in a lot of our signals. Really? Oh, yeah. All right, that must be streets that I don't go on. Some don't. They don't all have it. And that would be something where we'd have to go out and inventory the system and figure out where we have it, where we don't. And, and if you're, it sounds like you want to recommend that as another project. I mean, I'm more than willing to I add think countdowns, project. I don't know. I think count and as a bicyclist, I like it because I know if I have time to make it through at the end of a green, or sometimes I need to stop on a green if I right. want. So to like, I know Powell and Christie have it for sure. Yeah, and a lot of the, all the ones at Frontage Road and, and Powell have it. Um, and I can't tell you some of the older Shelman ones. Shelman Christie has it also. Powell and Hollis has it. Right. Um, there I might be a few on some of the side street that still don't have it. But I guess the ones in in my neighborhood don't have it. One I can't remember if Stanford has it, but I mean, Stanford does not have it. But that's another project that we can always, you, well, well, we could even use, we could use your bike, the bike plan implementation money on that. We felt it was important. So. Well, it would be something to talk about. And I, I guess that I just want to go back to that bike plan implementation money being for smaller projects. And this is, you know, so it sounds like this is kind of it for the next. And I know there's some really big, important projects, and that bridge at 53rd Street is very important to me. I'm really glad that's going in. Um, is the money appropriated for that? Well, we're showing it here, and we're, we're hoping we're, we're going to get the money. Uh, that's it, the, the court thing. Yeah, right. So it's most likely, I mean, Where we, is it? we're, yeah. it's shown in the community facilities group. Okay. That first group. 
So I mean, we're, we're showing this as funded. Uh, if you look at the project description of uh, number five, you go to number five. Oh, yeah. You yeah, got 200,000 grant and it costs $16 million. <laughs> I'm the developer, okay. But without that prior funding, is the, the money that we would get back from the state? Sorry, where were we going to put this one? That's on uh, number five. Five. Number six. Number five. Yeah. So as you can see. Oh, yeah. South Bay Front Bridge. Yeah, South Bay Front Bridge. So 18.7 million is what we're showing it as. We've already spent 2.8 million on design, right? Mm -hmm. So, and so we're we're right now we're fighting with the state over. Oh, Roughly eleven million dollars. Oh, okay. Right, and so we're hoping we get that approved, okay. and it, we're hoping we win in our in our lawsuit. It doesn't mean they're not going to challenge us again. But we're I hoping. thought we did win, and we're just waiting. We for won, them. and they state challenged it. Oh, they did. Okay. And so so we're going phase. to fight it. They're, they're fighting it right now. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we hear this year, and then they may challenge it again. We don't know. So this is kind of sitting here. Okay. And so we're. Uh, we also have some more bond funds uh, from the former redevelopment agency that we're, we're uh, suggesting we put on, into this project so that we have some contingency there um, because the, the prices have gone up over the years. Yeah. Okay, I have a question about that. It's just such a big number. I mean, it's just staggeringly huge when I look at the cost, say, of the 40th Street Bridge. Yes, it was built 10, 12 years ago, but it was like six and a half million dollars or something, close to that. This pedestrian bridge, 18 million dollars. Inflation hasn't even been. It's because you know, they have to, they have to build this? it and then they have to. Uh, I, I could show you pictures. They have to put it in at an eight hour period or something like that. You know, I could show. Four, four okay, hours. but I could show you pictures of bridges that I've taken in Laos that are a longer span that I can make for $200,000 by stringing cable and putting wood. You know, yes, it would sway in the wind, but it would be it would safe mean, enough. No. It would, it would safe meet enough. all the Talk structural sure. <laughs> necessities for its load. I mean, I'm serious. They, that the we, could, we could would say no to that. We could, they no, well, no, if we don't touch down and we don't See, block no. any traffic. Well, it for the RFP then. Well, it's just a different design concept. We don't, you know, in other words, I don't see us having to get locked in to just, you know, we're losers, that it doesn't go forward. There are ways that it could be made dramatically less money without touching railroad property and with, you know, it's just, it's absurd. I, I think though that the railroad, if I'm wrong, but I think the railroad has a big say in it because it goes across that property even though it doesn't touch. Yeah, the they own all the way to the stars, right? I, something like that. I think they're very sensitive about nobody jumping in front of trains. Yeah, well, I, I, I just am confident that from a purely engineering viewpoint, it could be built without ever having to hold up any rail traffic. It's just the, you know, the, the aesthetics that we're laminating on this project might be too much. I mean, if you can accept bridges that sway, the price is dramatically less. And it's just purely aesthetic. It's not an engineering issue or a safety issue. It's just, you know, there's beauty in things moving. And if we, you know, we can adapt to that concept. We can make that bridge if we fail. Well, let's see where we go. If we don't get to can I go back to the, the 175000 for bike? I just want to understand, so this money is $5.6 million plus the money for the bridges and stuff. This is it for the next five years for bike and head projects, basically. Or until the two years, really. For two years, we discretionary for it. Yeah. And then the other thing, I should say so that, that we're because we're, we're constantly going to be applying for grants mm -hmm. for so other projects. Other money. So there could be other monies that come up. And then also, if we get more Measure B money, there's going to be more money available mm -hmm. for, for okay. bike projects. Because I so, just I just want to say that I think it, it scares me a little how little money you know five point six million is not that much money. No, no, twenty twenty. Well, million. and even that, but yeah, most of that is for a couple of big projects, and I think there, I think one hundred and seventy five thousand isn't going to cover all the little things we might need to do, and I just want to point out that 
as the Bay Bridge Trail becomes more and more popular, I mean, it hasn't even had a full summer yet, and it doesn't reach Treasure Island yet, and I guess it won't for a couple of years, but I think there's, there, there's already, in the summer, was a huge amount of increased bike traffic in the city, mm -hmm. and we may want to put some attention to improving our bike routes to that bridge, and improving the amenities there, because right now they're not great, um, and it's sort of the face of Emeryville for a lot of people. Um, so I just, you know, that's just an example. There are probably other things that that's something that's on my mind because of the bridge that would be probably a little more expensive than that budget would be lost. So hopefully we will be able to get out of money in this is what I want to say. I'd like to second what you just said because, you know, maybe we, have no we, might, have, we, we yeah. might have to, you know, some of the other projects that just cost a lot of money you know, even if it's a signal at Doyle Street, which we need, I mean, that's a lot of dough if it comes to our pedestrian and bicycle traffic keeps going up at the rate that it's rising at. We, we could have all kinds of issues and troubles. And, and uh, I'm just astounded sometimes when I am over uh, at Trader <coughs> Joe's on my bike and I see pedestrians crowding the sidewalk trying to get over to the the mall, where there's just this, the sidewalk itself is right now not big enough to hold our regional retail traffic that's That's because there's the free sidewalk. parking in that parking lot and they're going that's, over to Bay Street. That's right, but you know, <laughs> we don't want to pay a park. But I, I'm just saying that, you know, there, there are issues that, exactly. that are like new for Which our I city think. that could keep coming. I think they will. Well, if they, they will. that happens, the political will be there. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Look at the difference between 15 years ago and well, I remember, on that block, we're, we're putting in the trail across the street, so that's going to change. Yeah. Okay, that will, I don't know if those pedestrians money. will be there, or they're, if they go to Powell Street Plaza, they're going to stay on that side, on, yeah, on that side of the street. Right? I also want to say that I think bike infrastructure and pedestrian infrastructure, but bike infrastructure in particular, is a really good deal. And I don't have statistics, and I don't know, if Cynthia, if you have statistics on this stuff, but. Wait, you, we get a lot more bang for our bike building a biker pet bridge. Oh, do you have something? Do you have a pamphlet on it? That, that, and, and, and even in terms of economic development, so many more people can get to a retail center by bicycle than could get there. If we provide enough bike for parking, they can get there by um, car. So I think 23% of this budget on bike projects is great, but I, you know, I think that's appropriate. Well, you were also talking about a town that was kind of an industrial place that didn't have any infrastructure for best range of bicycles, right? Mm -hmm. It's come a long way. Sure. Big difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what else so, do you um, your presentation, sir? I think uh, you have your comments. Uh, and then, of course, we can bring this back next time since the committee, was, the full committee, was here. If you want, if you want to do that, if you would be willing, I think it would be nice because I could see the full committee wanting to sort of act, might want to ask for, could you specifically do X, Y, you know, shift the money around or something. So, is the, is the amount of money that's in this what you presented to us? This is the amount the city has, and this is just about allocating it. Well, if you look at the big table here, the very top. So, if you look across the, the, the bold numbers where it says total estimated available funding, those are the various funding sources we have that we're funding the CFP with. So basically so, the money is there, and it's the just money, how to allocate it. No, well, the, first, the first row is estimated available funding as of June 30th. Okay. And then the next row underneath that is additional funding estimated over the five-year period. So, the, the top row there is what we have in the bank. So that's pretty pretty sure in the bottom right. row. The bottom row is like the revenue we get in, like for general capital fund. I mean, right. that's all the revenue we get from sales tax and property tax. And okay. So we've got the various funds here. Uh, like for example, the sewer fund can only be spent on sewer projects. We got right. and measure and, B and all. And the we're sewer. making projections on how we think right. those are going to grow right. over the five years.
Yeah, almost half that money is from the successor agency and the redevelopment. Right, so there's some, some that most of that is like, yeah. Time for public comments. <coughs> oh, you know, well, it was actually at the beginning, but. No, sure. but she can now. comment on this. Oh, yeah, I'm sure on the agenda, yes. Uh, I, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you to both of you. I really appreciate the comments regarding the best treatment improvements at Stop Lights. Um, I think that in terms of uh, creating a less hostile environment for bike pedestrians, um, not. I, as a pedestrian, I sometimes feel as a, like a second class resident when I have to like go push a button and it doesn't turn red, you know, it doesn't turn green for a really long time. So I really relate to what you guys have been saying. I really appreciate that. Uh, regarding the funding, um, I wanted to touch on the million dollars of additional funding that, and I'm sorry, I don't know, is it when you, that you mentioned at the beginning? There's been Cynthia, one million. Uh, excuse me, would you mind just identifying yourself? Sorry, the yeah, the yeah, yeah. armor with the East Bay Bicycle Coalition. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned that there's generally one million dollars of additional funding that's in there for emergency measures or for um, extra expenses. No, we're, we're trying to have a policy. We don't want to appropriate all the money we have <coughs> in, in reserve or yeah. in savings. We want to keep at least a million dollars there so that if projects go over budget or mm -hmm. there's an emergency that there's funding available and you don't have to unfund the project. Yeah. To do something. Okay, so I mean, one thing I'd be curious about is who decides when that money gets spent and how it's been allocated in the past. Well, we haven't had a policy like that in the past, okay. so that money's just in reserves, and then two years later, when you update the CIP, you look at all the total funding available for the projects you want to do, mm -hmm. and you allocate all the projects you're going to do in that, and you just keep a, a balance of a million. You don't want to spend all your money. Yeah, no, I understand. It's a cushion. Right. But the city council would make the decision. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and Robert, who usually comes to the Emeryville meetings, Robert Prince-Bell, so to be by some coalition, did want me to put in a plug for green paint and conflict zones wherever possible. <laughs> okay. And that would probably go into the 175000 Yeah. 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 And or we already or have... When we do some slurry seal projects, we can tap into that. And yeah. It's and something start. that other cities have started doing. Um, yeah. I think we have a plan to do that near, um, I can never remember the names of these streets, Christie and Shell Mound, where they, where it's near the uh, front of the hotel there. So where Shell Mound uh, takes a little, or goes jogs over to get to Powell and, no, I think Shell Mound goes straight. On oh, you mean at the public market? Yeah. Right yeah. before yeah. the public yeah. market yeah. where yeah. there's yeah. A, a difficult Shell Mound and Shell Mound. Yeah. yeah, where right now there was no bike lane and we asked right. for that right. exactly. to have some green exactly. paint. And I think that got approved. I don't know where that. The concept was approved by the city council. It's just oh, a matter right. of but trying to program time to do that. Okay. So so that is ready to go. So it'd be really exciting to get some green Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to happen. So that's it, I guess. Uh, end of my presentation. If you have more questions. And some more. Uh, we're going we're gonna to bring it back in March. Yeah. Uh, if the committee desires, we could do another. Do this again? Yeah, um, we want to put you down for 85 minutes, we'll put you down for 20 minutes or something like that. <laughs> well, do you want to get this back so that you could up, right? not have to copy it again? No, you can take it because, because there might be some changes over the next okay. month, so just, just hold on to it yeah, for your own reference. Okay. I think when we come back, it is an opportunity for the full quorum and anybody who hasn't had a chance to really read through this thoroughly mm -hmm. to make comments from the morning to the morning and feel free to come to some of the other advisory committee meetings if you want. And the, and the March 1st meeting, which is Saturday. Okay. Okay. I have a question um, that's not a bike pet question, but um, in the community facilities that has all the parks projects, and I saw in here somewhere that it said that they wanted the advisory committees basically to comment on things that fell within their purview. But it's all rolled into the community facilities. So mm -hmm. are we supposed to be commenting when it gets to Parks and Rec? Are we supposed to be commenting on all you the community facilities, or are we supposed to just pull out the? You have a specific parks? one you'd like to talk about? No, I was just wondering. Bike bike head was settled. We just separated yeah. out the marina. There, there's was separated yours out. was easy. This one was easy because it was in this that category. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, we didn't peel it out. I mean, it really. There were a lot of different categories, and, and the, these others were all sort of combined in. And I just well, I mean, sure if you exactly really look at everyone that says preventive maintenance, we could have also grouped those into facilities maintenance. I mean, it, yeah. it's kind of, we just chose a place to put it. 
I mean, all the parks are a community facility. So we should just pull out whatever we want. Whichever one you want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I also just want to make a general comment that this is something that I noticed in general that I think it's too bad that bike and ped is one category and transportation is another because their bike and ped is transportation. And I think it, it's semantics, but I also think it's important that we as a city take walking and biking seriously as transportation modes. And I, I'm sure that there was a good reason so that we sort of separate out the money for these things. But, you know, like we've got transit stop improvements, but transportation has a shuttle grant, a grant for a shuttle, you know, so, um, you know, there's, there, and well, then maybe the traffic Well, maybe the 8 to go shuttle should have been in the uh, bike path. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm wondering, and the traffic, you know, some of the traffic yeah. signals are for bike and pet, they're yeah. really not, they're not for cars, they're for bikes and pet. Well, plus, so, you know, annual street and rehabilitation stuff, we ride our bikes on the street. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, I think that really fits both us. cars and, mm -hmm. and bikes. So if you look at it in that way, 5.6 plus 5.5. We're just going to one last comment to make about uh, road hazards and bicycling. That uh, I was in an accident about five months ago on Franklin Street, San Francisco. And I have photographs of the probable cause, even though I was knocked unconscious, because I have the photographs of what was there, and then I have the CD of the woman who's calling it in who, was, who saw the accident. And what caused the accident was a road hazard from a trench that was across traffic on the right lane of Franklin Street. And it was two and three quarters inch deep. And the, the city of San Francisco redacted her phone number, so I cannot have her as a witness. And the city of San Francisco fights every road hazard you know, as a cause for bicycling accidents. It's just fight, fight, fight. If a car was involved, there, it, the whole issue would have been settled. But it's just you know having some money to repair road hazards or holding contractors to a, a standard that, you know, cars were going over this and two and three quarters of an inch deep was, you know, getting them concerned, but their shock systems allowed it, whereas a bicyclist going down a hill cannot, can't do that two and three quarter inch right. deep thing, and it was two feet wide, eight feet across, and if our city didn't behave like that, that would be great. If we had some money for doing road repairs that are going to send bicyclists down, even though it may not be traffic, it, it would just be a, a better attitude as a city. You know, even if it's just the right lane, we're doing a little on the right side of the right lane, just a little bit of that could save a lot of bicycle spills. Right. Well, our, to be honest, our streets are pretty in shape. We have some that are you know, Hollis really needs to be bad, and that's where a lot of the street rehab work money is going to go is in Hollis Street. But um, is that going to include putting bike lanes in? On? Well, actually, their bike plan doesn't call for anything on Hollis. Well, we don't have bike lanes planned for Hollis. Nothing. No, no bike lanes. Not, not for lack of my suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's that such it, a wide street. <laughs> But, but are there ch yeah, but inexpensive trucks, ways to quickly trucks. fill we do. things that are we, road we hazards have, to bicyclists? One, unless it's like on the state highway or San Pablo, if we have potholes or anything like that, we, we try to take care of it as soon as we can. We don't I think every bill does pretty, I can tell when I cross the Yeah, it is, it is better <laughs> that, you know, it's, but and I, our surrounding cities for a lot of our streets are yeah, some of the stuff is really bad. The only thing I would say about that street thing is that last summer, um, several bikeways were repaved, which was lovely that the city prioritized that. But the pavement that was put down was actually rougher than what was there before. And um, as a bicyclist, I'm really sensitive to rough pavement. I, I didn't like it. The actual, it, was a, it was a degrade in pavement for me. So I would just love it if before that stuff gets done if we could have a discussion with the, you know as a committee about you know paving choices and maybe there aren't that many choices but um, I mean Hollis uh, for some reason that I don't know that, the that, that story that seal was, was I don't know what it was because we did a rubberized chip seal on one of the streets we remember we got some complaints was on that horrible. Ad Adeline but it's the same Adeline exact same product it's the exact same product we put in on Horton and we don't get any complaints there. Horton wasn't as bad, but it, it's worse than it was before. But Adeline was almost unrideable, and yeah. then it settled down. Um, 
Mark but, promised it would. <laughs> but it, it, it isn't back, I think, to where it was before. So anyway, I think that the committee members were kind of shocked when we saw what was coming. There's a question here. Yes, ma'am. Actually, in, in response to what you were saying, um, are you familiar with Seek Quick Fix? It's a yeah. app. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and every vote is avoiding that one. Uh, every vote is, okay, because Oakland, the city of Oakland does promote it as a tool where citizens can report issues with streets. Like, you take a picture, um, and it, you know, you put the address in, it's, and other people can say, yes, this is a problem that I've had too, and I want it fixed. Um, well, I don't know, I'll be honest way. with you. I don't know that we're going to repay that launch fee because it's because it's rough payment. Oh no no no! I'm, I'm referring more yeah, in, in, in yeah. reference to, to his like issue, you know, like how to how yeah. to get you know. Sort of the city space. does have its own portal for complaints or concerns, okay. and we get those messages and send them to the appropriate staff. Person. Yeah, I guess Secret Fix just works well because it's the picture, you know, and other people can see whether somebody has already reported it, so they don't you get look at multiple separate. You know, it, it might be something to put on an agenda for the future. I, yeah, I have it on the list. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. just look at what uh, the city of Oakland is doing. Maybe invite one of the city of Oakland staff to see, you know, what their process is with yeah, we, that. We looked at that portal, and we have other ways to report things to. And I don't know that it's as good as C-Click Fix, but we C-Click Fix is pretty expensive in the way they approach it, mm -hmm. and they try to. So yeah, a couple of things on that too. We're we're and we're going back and looking at C-Click Fix again. But there's other and there are other things that are out there. Oakland. A big reason why it works is they have a whole call center yeah. at the back end attached to it, right? So they've got staff people. It's really, you know, it's good and mm -hmm. sophisticated. And so that just goes feeds right into yeah. it. So we're, but we're looking at all this. I mean, I know I've heard from a couple of you and um, from the council members too want us to try and find, you know, little things like that when they come up so that we can quickly, you know, know about it. And I, I love the. The, you know, they send the picture. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's no, a good suggestion. Yeah. So are we done with this item? Looks, so. like, looks like it's it. okay. So we can't really do any action on the bike for work day. 2014 support. Well, if I can report on that though, so the city council is going to appropriate some money to uh, bike to work day. They're increasing the allotment for what we had last year. Oh, okay. Um, so so just as a formality, we came, brought this to the committee. What, so you what knew did that they the, want it a lot? Pardon me? What did the city council want it a lot? Um, I think we added $200 to the allotment. So 2800 to Yeah, so we're, the, the, I think the East Bay Bicycle Coalition asked for additional funds this year to support, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we, we, uh, we, uh, we're taking it from the Measure B Bicycle Funds that we do. Okay. We weren't we're really looking for feedback, just uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just quick, I guess, update on what we did last year, a refresher. It, last year there were five stations in Emeryville, four of which were listed by the city. Um, there were over a thousand cyclists who stopped at those five stations. The number did increase a tiny bit from last year. Uh, it's, in some cities it went down, so we're really happy that it went up in Emeryville, and we hope it continue to go up. We also, last year, allotted an extra 200 bags from 300 to 500, and we're going to keep on increasing it, too. That's the more stuff to give away. Okay. Um, and yeah, I talked to Sarah about some of the stuff that the city of Emeryville does in terms of producing materials and outreach stuff to get people excited about bike to work day. Um, and I hope you'll be also considering uh, doing additional giveaways and stuff that we can put in the bags. Maybe we're not getting more numbers because uh, they're biking to work every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we so may a have more you know, sort of hit a full on. Bike yeah, well, I mean, but, say yeah, but, but what's, oh, the, what's the total population? What's the total population of Emeryville? It's supposed what? to be a little over 10,000. But I think that's not who bikes to work here. We have right. 30,000, 40,000. Well, I don't know what it is now. 30, yeah, when, when people, people stop here. at the end driver stations, they're not, they're, they're they're, they're, they might be coming from Richmond going to Oakland or going yeah. to the city. Yeah. I mean, it's a through way for a lot of people. Yeah. Especially now that on the Greenway, a lot of people use that as a through way from Berkeley to Oakland. Um, Last year, I will say, I don't know, is the $3,000 earmarked to all go to to the Bike to Work Day fund or some of that? Because I know last year we kept... It was 1000 for us if we want to buy our own stuff, stuff for the Energizer Station. And then 2000 And the 3000 to go to EVBC. Oh, so it's 4000 total? Yeah. Okay, okay. Because I know last year we had some money for stuff. Yeah, for okay. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Swag. Right. Mm -hmm. Swag. Yeah. Okay, so and I just want to say, Marcy, that 
this is welcome to working with the BPAC. This is what probably one of the biggest things that Peter coordinated every year, and Sarah too, I guess, um, be working on that. And so we should probably put that on the agenda in at least April, if not March, mm -hmm. to just talk about the whole organizing thing. Organizing yeah. it and who wants to be at stations yeah. and putting out the call to get yeah. the staff stations and all of that. What stuff. is the bike to work day this year? May 8th. May 8th. Thursday, May 8th. Already bring for ten days before and ten days after. <laughs> yeah. Not during bike to work month. Uh, so anyway, that's yeah. That's so those were our two inaction items. Yeah. And so we had the informational. We already did our informational item on loud. Yeah. So we can't approve the. The we can't vote on anything. Okay. Oh. Okay. Do we have any staff comments on our recap? Yeah. So a recap? All right. So there was countywide pedestrian bicycle working group meeting that staff attended. I believe Diana Kina attended that on January 15th in Oakland. And the group heard about the City of Alameda's cycle track design process, the State Active Transportation Funding Program, a complete streets requirement for general plan circulation elements and California Environmental Quality Act CEQA Transportation Analysis Reform. Maryville's general plan complies with the Complete Streets Act, and for CEQA, the state is leaning towards adjusting auto trips generated, which is what San Francisco uses, as the measurement for traffic impacts and future environmental documents. So that's the update from that. Uh, for City Council, EVOC, the Emeryville Bicycle Oakland Transportation Study. Uh, Emeryville Berkeley. Emeryville Berkeley. Yeah, yeah Emeryville. The yeah, three cities were, right? Yeah. There we go. Um, I heard an update and provided comments on the transit needs, and the consultants are now developing options for evaluation. So I'll keep updating you with that every month, what's going on. And I do you know if there's funding for implementation or if it was I just don't. I'll ask about that. I have that in my yeah. notes to follow up to bring back to you next time, but let me write it down here. So I just curious. I don't think there has been anything identified. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's just a study. So it's not going to go anywhere unless some additional money comes. I think the idea is that this will allow us to apply for, uh, for grants. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so uh, then the Planning Commission had a study session on the proposed Hyatt Fisk Hotel, which we reviewed here. They had similar uh, comments and feedback. And the Transportation Committee, um, there's no updates for, right, uh, for that right now. And the Parks and Recreation Committee, at its January 15th meeting, the Parks and Recreation Committee discussed Temescal Park, tree limbs, a future Adelaide Street entrance, potential restrooms, improvements to this park are steps towards an east-west Temescal Creek Greenway. So that is the recap. Baby steps, right? <laughs> baby, so, absolutely baby steps. Actually, the, um, you just made me think of something, that access on the Temescal Creek, Adeline Street side, um, I, I don't know where that's at. Is that going to be Yeah. So would, would um, how would the design work? Like, if it's approved in here, then we would do an RFP, and then well, we have a project in here for seventeen thousand dollars to hire a architect to come up with a conceptual design, and then the thought was uh, working with Escuela Bilingüe because they're they're interested in putting in right. an improvement yeah. in lieu of a bike or so pedestrian path. The path that they're gonna, yeah. So we need to develop a concept that can be priced out. And then either they give us the money and we build it, or we have them build it, we haven't figured that out. So this would, instead of just going through the side streets, it would also go up to Adeline? It would be another access point from Adeline. Adeline's higher than the park, so there's a, a ramp that needs to be built that would come down to the park. But the park actually goes up to Adeline, there's just no access? Yeah. 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 Okay. And it's also a way to open up, uh, open it up, because right mm -hmm. now it's really closed. It's and like on, yeah, and, and it's, so it's sort of a problem from a safety perspective, yeah. and the police really have to drive in to see what's going on, and so um, that was one of the reasons yeah, we thought that was a good idea. Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's open off the outer line, there will be more people, you know, right. visible to more people. It'll be nice access for the new locks. <coughs> yeah. 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 Can I, can I make another? Yeah, 
I have a comment about, um, oh, I'm sorry, this relates to the Horton Street traffic. I've been riding a lot more at rush hour on northbound on Horton Street. Southbound doesn't seem to be this problem, but northbound coming from where the malls are. And one thing I noticed, I, I, when I'm riding on a weekday at rush hour, so many cars go straight through and they're clearly doing, they're not local traffic, they're doing a throughway. And then I was there this weekend and there was just as much traffic because the malls were really busy and almost all the cars turned left or right. So I think... So they're not commuters. Right. So I think what that says to me is that commuters are specifically using that route and we need and to discourage In lieu of Hollis. In lieu of Hollis. They're using, it, I, they're using yeah. it in lieu of the freeway. Well, right. They're coming but off they, before the maze right. and going all the way either either to Is it going northbound or southbound? Where are you? Northbound. Going northbound. 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 Because Doyle doesn't go through, so why if we no, shut no, them? No, no, no. They go on to Overland and they sit at that horrible light. By the oh, park and they there. go right and there. And then they go yeah. on the freeway uh, down there. There's only one light that way. Like, one long light. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, I would. I think that that needs to be part of our Horton Street plan is to discourage that because I think that you know it's we're going to be adding people who are going to that area, and if we have people who are using it as a throughway, it's well, really while we're talking about that, I'm glad we're talking about that. So. We have that grant. We need to figure out what we want to do on a temporary basis. And we were talking about at one point putting in a new crosswalk, uh, sort of on the towards 53rd Street. Uh, right. The, the issue is that That's Novartis Novartis doesn't need that. Anymore. Oh, really? Because right. Novartis because they sold half their property to Griffles, and so they they own this lot. They own a big parking lot, but they don't have any properties nearby the property, parking lot, so nobody's using it anymore. There were cars parked in it when I went by today. Yeah, but they, I had a meeting with them last week, so they, they don't really see the need for that crosswalk right now. Well, so. the moving the crosswalk was ancillary. The original idea was to take the crosswalk that's there and do a pinch point yeah. for for slowing traffic and making it safer. And we said they said they wanted to move it, and we said, fine, who cares where it is? It so it could just turn into a pinch point without a crosswalk? Or, 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 or with the existing crosswalk. Well, the, the Griffles Biotech Company is likely to be more intensively using the site than Novartis has been. Well, I've got a map that shows who owns which property, and it, it was very evident that they didn't need that crosswalk the way they... Oh, really? Because yeah. they don't have the adjacent... They don't have the, that many people in that area. Well, it would be nice to bring... I mean, I went to a transportation committee meeting when we were first start talking about this, and that was on the agenda, and there were people from Novartis, and I feel like some other businesses, too, and it was really helpful to have their input, and they were actually really surprisingly to me, fine with the, the pinch point trial, but they wanted to make sure the sidewalks serve their employees, and it sounds like that's changed, but I think it's just important as we move forward to talk with the businesses that are there and find out what's, how we can make this work for them. Well, the change of Navarro's is fairly recent. It was yeah. since that, uh, this it was, was after, a while ago. Yeah, it was after that transportation. Yeah, it was first, first of the year that yeah. sold, sold to this Barcelona biotech company. That is a big deal. This, wow, is, this is a serious diagnostic biotech company, huh. and uh, Novartis wasn't really doing serious biotech diagnostic stuff. They're sort of getting out of it. In, and Gr Griffles is that company? Yeah, Griffles is that Barcelona-based company, and they're, they're a big deal, and they're expanding to everything. So I, we're likely to see more views. Well, what you need to do there is not pinch point to slow the cars down. You need to eliminate them going through. Well, remember, they built the road. They built all the connections so that they could expand. I mean, that's why we have Horton connecting to through to the Amtrak station. They paid for all those improvements for those connections. So no, now Horton we're suggesting did. here that we don't want that. So Well, we if somebody's going to Amtrak on Horton, I think that's fine. But we're not talking about cars going to Amtrak. We're talking about cars that are using it as a, an alternative to the freeway. And I don't think, you know, if they're going to do that with San Pablo, you know, that kind of sucks, but whatever. But I don't think it's the bike highway. is an right. The state highway is designed to be overflow. Right. The frontage roads and the state highway are designed to be the overflow for the traffic jam. Right. right. Well, it was originally, no, it was designed to be the state highway, and then we built another highway. And I think they were thinking there wouldn't be traffic jams, but clearly that didn't happen. So but, I think in the next meeting, you might want to talk further on scope for that would be great. That grant and how we want to, you know, use a design effort. Yeah. And I don't know, I yeah, I don't know if we can deal at all. We probably can't with that Stanford and Horton intersection, which is terrible, but probably not as big a deal. 
just so I can safely turn. I probably need one of the You mean the big, the big, the big angled one? one? Yeah. I think there's a, a way we can fix that with paint, actually. Or oh, God, I'd love paint. to see like a huge sculpture in the middle of it and a round and a rotary. <laughs> It's, That's you know, what I'd like to see there. As I'm going through that Big one more, I, I mean, I think I said this last month that I'm really noticing because of the angle and where the building is, I really, if I'm turning left, I can't see the traffic that's going northbound on Horton. And from what, um, what I'm coming from Stanford, going Stanford. westbound on Stanford, turning south on Horton, mm -hmm. and I really can't see them and they can't see me. So we really both have to kind of get into the intersection before we can see each other, which is... Yeah, I mean, nobody, everyone stops, so it's not like we're going to have an accident necessarily, but it's, you know, and, and I, it's just not a great spot. Uh, yeah, I, know, I know what would fix it, what? this whole thing. Right at 40th Street, between 40th and Park, in court in one way going south. With bikes going two ways? With bikes going two ways. Uh, no, about two months ago, it was actually a night. I'm not sure that they, we have the political <laughs> will to do something like that, but it would work. One-way street, right? <laughs> I hate one-way streets. Yeah. But about two months ago, there was this terrible, yeah. there was a terrible traffic jam on Hollis, and it, cars were backed up almost all the way to Powell Street. And I could, I thought there must be an accident or something terrible must have happened. And it turned out there was a lot of car, there were a lot of cars coming up from 45th Street. And then I read Brian had something in the Tatler about. Um, PG&E or somebody had um, had diverted some of the traffic from Horton Street because of some work that they were doing, and um, and it really it really just paralyzed Hollis Street because um, the the cars um, instead of going instead of going down Horton they they came up 45th Street and so every time you know they were all alternating at the traffic um, sign and so. So that's something else that has to be taken into consideration if, is if there's if traffic is slowed down on the other side of 45th Street that traffic might come off 45th to um, to Hollis or to cross Hollis. But, but I also think we're one of the the transitional things that we will experience as we make Emeryville more bike and pet friendly is there will be some moments where it's more less convenient for cars and I think that will not be permanent. Because I think as you make it more convenient and safer and easier, they'll find different routes. See, well, they'll find different routes, and I think more people will hopefully will be encouraged to take transportation if that's a better option to walk and bike instead of just getting in their car for a really short time. So hopefully it'll ease it up. Yeah, and then you get the guy that complains because he lives out in Richmond and he works in Cupertino or something like that. It takes him two and a half hours to get to work. Well, you should ride a Google bus. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't work for Google. <laughs>